Hey guys, Jim here, and I wanted to share with you a, I guess a little bit of a long-term review and my feelings on my Todd Bag Bodega. I guess it's been about six months now since I initially purchased it. It's been carried a whole hell of a lot. It's been used a hell of a lot, and you know, there's sometimes there's this certain degree of excitement that you get when you first get a new toy. I don't care what it is, uh, you know, in our cases, uh, we're talking about knives. And sometimes you can tend to overlook small things or maybe not even notice small things that you would consider to be, I don't know, I guess somewhat less attractive in the overall scheme that may make you second guess your purchase or uh, help you decide not to purchase from that maker ever again. And that's going to happen with everything. It could be, you know, car, motorcycle, knife, watch, gun, <laughs> wife. <laughs> uh, that after being around it, handling it, fondling it, using it for a while, you start to see its deficiencies and, and where it needs to make up for things. So as time goes on, I'm going to be doing some of these long-term reports on various knives that I've got. And I think it was important to kind of go back to this one, A, because it's it's so relevant right now, the topic of any Todd Begg knife due to the new show that came out, Blade Brothers on Discovery. And we'll, I'm going to discuss my thoughts on the show a little bit, too, in a few minutes. And the the overwhelming popularity of, of these knives. And a lot of people have been talking lately, you know, are they mid-tech? Are they custom? Are they just regular production knives? And... It's funny because uh, Todd actually made a comment on one of the forums and he says there, he calls them DNC, damn near custom. You know, they, they do outsource for the blade grind, um, the heat treating, and there was one other small thing, I forget what it is, uh, but everything else is completely done by hand in their shop. And honestly, when you pick this up, you get the feeling that you're handling a custom knife. And some people have said, you know, I can justify 850, 950, 1050, which are the three price levels, uh, by the way, uh, on a custom knife. Not sure I could go you know, quite that high on a mid tech. A lot of people have that threshold of five to six hundred dollars on a mid tech. And I get that and I certainly understand that. In my opinion, you are probably not going to find a custom knife made as well as this for the same price that you're paying for this. And I know it sounds like a really bold statement. You know, the, the G10 versions or the Canvas Micarta, those are $850. You go to Carbon Fiber, they're $950. And if you go to Lightning Strike Carbon Fiber, you're at $1050. That's a lot of money. Not going to deny that. But even now, six months later, I can't find a flaw with this knife. I can't find an application in which it's not practical for use. I sometimes fight myself not to carry it. I'm very fortunate, I'm very lucky, and I'm very thankful to be able to own what I feel are some pretty decent knives got a pretty nice collection. I'm happy with where it is and it, it's getting better. But there are days that I will have to fight myself to carry one of those other beauties instead of reaching for my bodega. It has broken in perfectly. It's even a smoother flipper now than it was when I bought it. Yet the tolerances have remained exactly the same. The lockup is exactly the same as where it was when I first purchased this knife. Even when I really, really whip it out, that's where it goes. Nothing has loosened. There is no play whatsoever, up, down, side to side. I've had knives that within the first couple of weeks, the pivot would loosen on its own. I've even got one. You know, and I paid nearly $700 for it that I've had to even take <laughs> the damn pivot screw out, put a little, a little drop of uh, Loctite on there, put it all back together, 
and it's still loosening up. I can't even figure that out. This knife has been nothing but flawless perfection. It's sharp, it's useful, it's absolutely beautiful. I've actually grown more fond of this knife over time. I find this knife even more attractive now than when I would ogle them before I ever owned one. The flowing lines, the incredible thought that went into this design. Yeah, sure, I would love to own a Todd Begg full custom. Uh, I don't care how good of a knife maker anybody is, I do not see myself ever sitting on a six-year wait list, which is currently what Todd is at. And I'll also see myself spending that kind of coin on the majority of the things that he's offered. He's made some beautiful knives. And I think people tend to forget, they tend to just look at the bodega and the glimpse and maybe the field marshal and think that's really all that he's ever done. He has done some wild, crazy, outrageous things bordering on fantasy knives. And really, he has done fantasy knives as well, if you get down to it. His creativity seems to know no bounds. The precision in which he demands all of his knives to be made is incredible for the money you're spending. So whether you want to call this a custom or a mid-tech, I don't care. I have yet to own another knife that was this perfect that my feelings have remained unchanged about it since the very first day I got it. Every time I show this knife to somebody, whether they're a knife person or not, they all talk about how beautiful it is. And it's a great size. It feels remarkable in the hand, no matter how you're holding it. It's just damn near perfect. It's hard to call anything perfect. I'm a perfectionist, and I'm somebody that doesn't use that term lightly. I think this is about as close to perfect as you can possibly get. And I'm, I'm, I know I'm, I'm talking in a staccato that's a little bit off from my normal videos, but I'm trying to be very careful about how I choose my words and not just rush through this for the sake of time. I think the knife deserves that. I think the quality that comes through deserves that. And I think anybody that may be on the fence about purchasing one, I hope this video, along with the original review video that I did, which was like 22 minutes long, I, I hope they help to make up your mind. The problem is, you're probably not going to see any out in the wild anymore. And I was kind of wondering why around October of last year, over the last six, seven, eight months, why we've seen so many out of nowhere. Because like I said in the original video, I jumped on this at an utterly ridiculous price. I paid twelve fifty for this. Because at that time, you just, you could not get a bodega, period. And I said, damn it, I'm finally going to own one. I see one here in front of me. I'm going to buy it. And then all of a sudden, they came out of the woodwork at the normal, regular prices everywhere. And now I realize with the introduction of Blade Brothers that that's why Todd put all of his production out, got him out there so the people would have him in their hands when the show debuted or they'd be available to a few dealers by the time the show debuted. I get that. That's very smart. Problem is now they're all bought up. The very night that that show aired, which was uh, eight days ago. The four bodegas that I had my eyes on at different dealers were all snatched up that very night. Because I had really planned on getting either a carbon fiber or a lightning strike to have a second bodega. The problem with the show is, and here's the thing, and it really is, um, it, it's difficult to talk about it honestly. I really like Todd. I really like Mattia. I think they are fantastic people. I've had very brief interactions with them, you know, just simply through messaging, uh, talking about projects and, and stuff like that. 
they have fantastic attitudes, fantastic work ethics, create an amazing product. And I really, really, really like Todd and his work. The show was just, I'm sorry, it was a fucking train wreck. And I apologize to anybody that the, uh, the F-bomb may offend, but it was a train wreck. While it was really exciting to get a chance to see one of the hobbies that we love being showcased on a major network and get a full show. Oh my God, that was so exciting. It was great. And you get to see a glimpse of a bodega here and there. And you got to see that beautiful art version in the Damascus. Just amazing. The problem was, well, first off, they made it a 30-minute show format. That was, right out of the gate, the worst thing they could have done. No matter what they're trying to accomplish in that show, it's going to have to be rushed. They're trying to fit in a build or two. They're trying to fit in the, the whole comedic process with the, with the youngest brother. And they're trying to do all these different things within the framework of a 30-minute show, including commercials. So you got, what, 20, 22 minutes runtime. You can't do it. Everything feels rushed and so many things are glossed over that any excitement you may have for seeing the process of manufacturing or, excuse me, uh, building a custom knife is lost because you don't get to see hardly any of it. The other part of it, I mean, really, it should be, it should be a full hour show. The other part of it, and this is all, by the way, all the critiques that I have have nothing to do with Todd Beck, period, or his business or his products. It's all on the television producers and the choices that they've made. It, I expected it very quickly to turn into something like American Chopper. Unfortunately, they came right out of the gate with it. Ridiculous builds, cartoonish, circus-like builds, things that somebody that's really interested in this hobby would not want. And, and, and think about it. Think about American Chopper. When they first started, it was, it was really great. It was, it was a couple of guys in a small shop doing some pretty damn good work. And then once they did their first theme build, it all went to shit from there. Now, it's a double-edged sword because their popularity skyrocketed. They're each multi-millionaires. Their business is larger than the, it could have ever been without the show. But that's based on a television general audience creating that popularity, not the people that truly enjoyed motorcycles. Once they started just slapping crap all over the tank and hanging off the swing arm and utterly ridiculous monsters. And if you've never seen one of their bikes in person, you know what I mean. I mean, they're like 16 feet long. You know, uh, you throw your, your hands up on the grips and, and you know, they're, they're, you know, five feet from the ground. I mean, they're, they're truly ridiculous monstrosities, almost unrideable in many cases. So, you know, your real bike guys aren't going to be into them. And that's unfortunately what happened right out of the gate with Blade Brothers. I mean, they're making just utterly ridiculous, a retractable three talon claw that sticks, that you wrap around your arm and it's got hydraulic. I mean, come on, seriously. And I'm not saying that there isn't a collector out there that really would commission Todd to make such a thing. But really, should that be the subject of the very first show? Wouldn't it have been better to do something like maybe a few builds on the bodega, show the incredible quality that comes out of their shop, the creativity, the design process? Sure, you start getting overly technical and only the knife geeks are going to be into it and your general audience is going to tune out. You know, there has to be an entertainment factor, and I totally understand that. But when you've basically made a mockery of what this man has built the business and the popularity that he's built, I think it's a damn shame. Subsequently, I have not seen another show. They aired the first two episodes in the first night. And last night, Friday night, it was not on. So I got to wonder what that's all about. I find it a shame. And I know that they were talking to a few different makers. I, I talked to another maker uh, whom Discovery had talked to about doing a show, but he was kind of a one-man operation. You're not going to have any drama. You're not going to have any comedy. There's not going to be all kinds of craziness going on. So a shop like Ted's, or excuse me, like Todd's, uh, certainly made more sense. 
I just find it ridiculous. He makes such an amazing product. There were so many things they could have focused on and talked about. And instead, it went cartoonish and ridiculous and silly and, and completely contrived for TV. So, I mean, yeah, I'll still watch any episodes that may come on later. You can't help it because I love his product and, and I respect him and for what he does. And I, I want to support him in any way that I can. But the show is a farce. And again, not his fault. It's just the way it is, you know. And unfortunately, it's, it's going to make these knives impossible to get. As if they weren't already difficult. Very, very difficult now. The prices are going to go through the roof. And I really wish I would have jumped and grabbed that second one as quickly as I thought about it. And I didn't. And I kind of knew what was going to happen. Oh, well. I will find a way. There will be enough people out there that don't care about screwing people over and jacking up the prices and trying to make an extra 500 bucks off their knife just because it's the uh, flavor of the day. And I'll find one at the right price. And I'll be, I'll be, okay, I'll be okay with that. Until then, I'm certainly going to be holding on to mine. Hopefully it'll get better. I just don't see that it will. I hope it does. It'd be a, it would be a great concept if they uh, if they put a little bit more intelligence into it. Put the thought into the program that Todd puts into his knives. That's what I say. But again, a long-term report on this. I, I could not possibly be happier. As you see, it's obviously being carried. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Focus. You know, you'll see obvious wear marks all over my frame. I'm cool with that, man. It shows that this is being properly used, properly loved. God, I just love how that flips. And I love how smooth that overall action is. His detent is so perfect. The action is so smooth. I'm already on his list. Thank God he opened the list up before the show started. I'm on his list for the Glimpse 5.0. I already got my order in. Doing the the, uh, the carbon fiber inlays. I cannot wait. I think he said two or three more months uh, until they go into production. Uh, other cool things going on. I just uh, worked out a nice deal with Dave Curtis. You, know, you guys have seen my F3 video. I love my Curtis F3. And I decided I wanted a four inch and me and Dave talked over a few things and I made a custom request. I don't want to let the cat out of the bag yet because right now it's a one off. Uh, he's not going to make production of it. And I don't want to let the cat out of the bag, but he's going to be using materials he's never used before. So I'm going to be getting a four inch in the next two weeks made uh, by him. Just had a nice conversation with Greg Medford. You guys know I love my Medford Praetorian, uh, the, the contest knife that I won. And then I ordered a Praetorian tie that'll be here in about three and a half, four months. And we just discussed a different concept, an entirely different look than he's ever created before. And he says, you know what's really funny? I was just thinking about that and I was just sourcing to get pricing on being able to do that type of thing. And I'm thinking about just making the one. I said, fine, I want it. That's why I came to you, because I was hoping you would actually do it. I want it. Consider it sold. So I don't know how long that'll be or when even the process is going to start, but I really can't wait to see that. And I got a few more little things uh, in the hopper right now, but I don't care what I'm getting and how much I'm spending. I have still, I mean, I'm really excited right now about my Direware Solo V2. I love it, love it, love it, love it. You guys, I'm, you know, I'm loving my Will Moon Mark VI, and that's really number two behind this as far as flawless perfection and usefulness. But I don't care what I get, I still come back to my bodega, and, and I hold it in my hands like my firstborn child. It's the strangest thing. I have such, it's, it's weird, it's almost like an emotional connection with this knife. I mean, it's just a knife. I mean, we get down to it. They're all just, they're just, you know, hunks of titanium and steel. There's nothing particularly special about them. They don't have a soul. But there's something about this one that I keep going back to. And I think it's going to remain a, uh, a treasure in my collection forever. So hopefully you guys that haven't bought one yet that have been considering it, hopefully this pushes you over the edge. I don't really gush over much of anything. And I really, I know I'm gushing about this. That's just how special it is.
I would love to hear from you guys down there in the comments or I'd love, really love to see a video response. What's that one knife for you that you just, no matter what it is, how, how expensive or inexpensive or whatever it is, that you just go back to and you cannot find a flaw with it, that it is performed over a long term in every positive way, that no matter what you buy new, once the honeymoon period wears off with that new piece, you still go back to. What's that one knife for you? It may not be the end all be all. It may not be the one that you have 100 years from now. But it's the one that's bringing you currently the most joy. And every time you look at it, it's almost like you fall in love with it all over again. So, yeah, put it in your comments below or I'd love to see a video response because I'd love to see your knife in action. I'd love to, 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 to hear your thoughts as you're holding and as you're playing with it and tell us how cool it is. Maybe you'll talk one of us into buying something that you like. We'll see. Anyway, I'm out of here for right now. This ran about twice as long as I expected it to. Thank you guys, as always, for watching. I really appreciate the support and all the great comments. And uh, to all my new subscribers, thank you guys so much. And I'll try to keep uploading as much content as, uh, as I can pour out of my little pea brain. Good night.